Clayton. Hurdler. Doctor. Sehen Sie doch mal, ob der Gefangene schon benehmungsfähig ist. Und wenn ja, lassen Sie mich bitte allein mit ihm. Sehr gut. Nötige Umgehend, Aussage 6. Ja, genau wie im Fall Rositzki. Natürlich anderen Namen. Captain Alan Thorndike, Engländer. T-A-O-R-N-D-I-K-E. K-E. Gefangen an Vorführen. Langsam, langsam. Ich komme doch früh genug dran. Schaffjörn! Ich verbinde mir diesen sinnlosen Hoheiten. Benehmen Sie sich anständig! Abtreten! Please be seated, Captain Thorndike. Thank you. Cigarette. Thank God. You know, if you just walked up to this house in a normal way, instead of... Uh, you would have been invited to lunch by our Fuhrer. I've anticipated the pleasure of meeting you for years. I'm afraid I don't know... I like you, my dear Thorndike, I've had but one passion in life, and that is the hunting of big game. I'm convinced that I would have become more famous even than yourself if I hadn't renounced it in favor of politics. Politics? Yes, I uh, find it a more exciting field of action. My branch of it. You're surprised that I know your name so well. I was in Nairobi on my own safari the year that Orkinia rang with your exploits. So you see, it's quite natural that I should know who you are. Yes. And also you've taken... Uh my passport. Nonetheless, my dear Thorndike, I should have recognized you on sight. A man whose brother was a guest in this house only last September. So you know my brother. When Lord Risborough was sent here by your Prime Minister on a mission of appeasement. I found him a credulous simpleton. Do you know, Thorndike, that this is the most closely guarded house in the world? Rather. I would have staked my life that no living thing could have entered this area without being seen. But then, of course, we didn't count upon a creature that has learned to stalk the most cunning animal, that can catch scents upon the wind, and has mastered the trick of moving through a forest as if he were transparent. Look out there. For 500 yards, not a tree, not a shrub, a man running towards this house would be cut down before he'd taken five steps. And yet, on that ledge above, was a man with a precision rifle and the high degree of intelligence and skill that is required to use it. Your judgment of distance is uncanny, Thorndike. The sights were set at 550 yards, only 10 feet short of the exact range. I checked it. Obviously, my dear Thorndike, such a man cannot be allowed to live. Surely you don't think I'm an assassin. You were stopped before you could shoot. But I could have easily. Good heavens, man, I never intended to shoot. I merely wanted to find out if it were possible. That was the excitement of it, the danger, the fun. It was that fellow jumping me that made my gun go off. You disappoint me, Thorndike. 
I dare say I have been a bit thick, but, well, from the way you talked about hunting and all that, I assumed you knew it was a sporting stock. A what? A sporting stock, stocking the game you're after for the fun of it, not to kill. Well, I'm not begging off from any consequences, but you will permit me to doubt your claims as a hunter of big game if you fail to understand the fascination for a man who's hunted all commoner game of hunting the biggest game on earth. That's it, precisely. The most dangerous of all animals, man. But you don't kill. The sport is in the chase, not the kill. I don't kill any longer, not even small game. I know what I can do with a rifle. If I can stock an animal and get within range, the rest is a mathematical certainty. And that's sheer cruelty, and I don't like cruelty. The real fun is matching my wits against the instinct of an animal that isn't going to let me get near enough to shoot. Your conversation fascinates me, Thorndyke. But this softness in your nature with regard to the ultimate purpose of firearms betrays the weakness, the decadence, not only of yourself, but of your entire race. Yes, you're symbolic of the English race. I'm beginning to think that you're symbolic of yours. We Nazis are finding a new life, a new vitality for our people by returning to the primitive virtues. Such as going back to the barbarism of decapitation? We do not hesitate to destroy in order to create a new world. God help it. I'm sorry for you. And I for you, Thorndyke. You and your world. I will look. Marita. Heil Hitler! You can leave this country a free man. You can return to your position and friends in spite of what you've done. On what condition? Your name signed to this. Later, it will be witnessed by the Chief of Secret Police and other officials. What is it, a suicide note? It is a confession that on this 29th day of July, 1939, you have attempted to assassinate our Fuhrer, and that you have undertaken this crime with the approval of your government. I what? That you have acted as an assassin for the British government. I can't believe you're serious. Do you expect me to sign a lie? You still insist you had no intention to shoot? Of course, I told you it was a sporting stock. Then why didn't you leave your rifle behind? Uh, I've asked myself that. And I think the answer is that... that it wouldn't have been sporting. It wouldn't have been playing the game. Nothing betrays the hypocrisy of the English more than their use of that phrase, playing the game. One plays a game to win, Thorndyke. Nonsense. I don't expect you to understand. Even pulling the trigger on an empty gun was a, oh, a kind of cheating with myself. It, it didn't prove anything. I did, you know. Oh, naturally. It had to be a loaded rifle with my finger on the trigger, with only my individual will, my civilized conscience, between me and the extermination of your strutting little Caesar. Thorndike. I mean no insult, but how do you expect me to describe a man who wants to play God and have everyone else in the world run around and say, Heil Hitler. Thorndike, I warn you. Oh, no, thank you. Will you sign this document? You are in no position to refuse. That's for me to decide, isn't it? You're thinking it is easy to throw away your life. Yes, it is. But uh, how well do you stand pain? If you won't listen to me, you'll have to talk it over with these men. I would save you from their persuasion. Very well. Ignat, you've been able to think Fangenen.
His Excellency, the German ambassador desires to speak with him. Of course he was there, sir, all the time. Don't much load up. The German ambassador is on the telephone, my lord. What? Oh, has a man no privacy even in his own home in the middle of the night? I told him I would see if you were still up, my lord. Oh, very well, very well. Hello? Hello? Yes, Rizipa speaking. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. <laughs> a pleasure, I assure you. I heard some rumor that Captain Thorndyke is visiting our country. I'm sure I don't know, Your Excellency. Have you called his club? I wish to telegraph my friends in Berlin to see that he's taken care of properly. We cannot, of course, neglect any member of your lordship's family. <laughs> it's extremely gracious of your excellency, but I'm sure you're mistaken. I haven't seen him for weeks. <laughs> Sportsman, you know. Always running off to the end of the world to catch a fish or some such nonsense. Yeah, I'm positive he's not on the continent. He may be on his ranch in Canada. Spends a lot of time there. Not at all, not at all. What a great pleasure, I assure you. The man is a fool, but absolutely honest. The Gestapo are a pack of... Send this message to Beretta's garden. Yes, sir. I should hesitate to question the efficiency of the Gestapo agent who claims to be holding Thorndike. But after my conversation with Lord Risborough, I am convinced Thorndike cannot possibly be your man. Clearly a case of mistaken identity. Always glad to be of service, idiot. Gleich wird zu sich kommen. Katzen sind sehr leise und unregelmäßig. Wer noch mal da rein muss, kratzt und sagt. Thorndike. Thorndike! Oh. You're being exasperatingly stubborn. You must realize that this cannot continue much longer. Are you ready to sign? Believe me, my dear fellow, I don't want you to die. Yes. Just sign your name and it'll be important for us that you live. You will receive the best of medical treatment. You will be free to go home, free to live on that fine estate of yours, free to do anything you like except to leave England. Are you being so foolish as to imagine yourself a martyr for England? Is that why you refuse? Why refuse, then? Why keep on torturing yourself? Because I don't like force. You force your own people. You keep in line. You think you can force everyone else. Well, I'm one man saying you can't. As you wish. Uh, I'm not responsible for your suffering. You are, in fact, taking your own life. That's going to be hard to explain, isn't it? What is? My suicide. Lots of questions going to be asked. High places. High places. That's one place where no questions will be asked. You 
given me the key I've been searching for. You won't change your mind about this? Certainly not. Very well. Identification is essential in uh, high places. We'll give you back your passport and your wallet, clean you up and... Doctor. Stecken Sie in die Tasche, die Tasche, die anderen Sachen auch. Jawohl, sechs zur Vorfahren. Machen Sie ihn ein bisschen sauber, Blut abwaschen und so weiter. Lassen Sie mich wissen, wenn der Wagen vorgefahren ist. people in England that know that men of my character don't do this sort of thing. Men of your character have accidents. Tomorrow the doctor and I will go hunting. No one will question what we find when we've found it. This ledge is treacherous. Come and see. Donnerwetter. Das ist doch... Verflucht. Kommen Sie, Doktor. Oh, <laughs> 
Skateboard, you'll be back by now. We are going to sail tonight. Right you are, sir. The blight is going to let us sail pretty soon. We might as well all go ashore. Good night. My word, you seem to be knocked about a bit. Would you mind closing that door? This is a British ship, isn't it? Danish registry. But you're British. Rather. Cabin boy. My father does business with the captain out of Southampton. I'm British too. Oh, I'd know you were British anywhere, sir. You seem to be in a bit of trouble, sir. Uh, more than a bit, I'm afraid. Have you committed a crime, sir? No. Was it? Um, about a woman? I see you no light. I thought so. They're a dickens of a problem, aren't they, sir? Where are you about? East India Docks, London. And when are you sailing? Tonight, <laughs> if we can get permission. Thank you. 
tonight as soon as these policemen search the ship. Do it. Show them everything. Yeah. Then they get clearance, no? Yeah, well, then. Younger. You will want to start below decks. Yes. This way, please. Wait. I come with you. I take your coat, sir. You might need it. It's cold on deck. You think so? All right. Come. Come on. Captain, you didn't search, is it not? Go away, boy. Go away. I don't need you. Please, go away. Maybe you think I would hide stowaways, huh? Or maybe you think I hide somebody under the mattress, no? Oh, now we will sail, is it not? Certainly, Herr Kapitän. Younger. We only do our duty. Herr Kapitän surely understands. Certainly. Vena. Up in. Yes, sir? Tell the first mate we sail at once. Yes, sir. Herr Kapitän, uh, can you take a passenger? Passenger? You mean he will pay? Ja, natürlich. He has papers? Jawohl, Herr Kapitän. He is English, but you need have no doubt about him. His papers are in order, and he has money. Oh, here he is. We have present Captain Jensen, Mr. Thorndike. It's a pleasure, sir. How do you do? I'm not averse to paying whatever you demand for my passage, Captain. You see, I have urgent business in London. This is my passport, Captain. You, Mr. Vayner? I thought I saw you go ashore, sir. Ah, yes. But I forgot to say goodbye to the captain. He's not here. Captain Jensen's on deck, sir. He's going ashore with the cargo manifest. You may miss him if you wait here. Ah, yes. It's easy to miss a man aboard ship now, isn't it, Mr. Vayner? I thought you leave us when you told me goodbye. You forget something, yes? I'm a very forgetful man, Captain. Yeah. Always forgetting the obvious. It's my failing. Come, I take you ashore with me. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Karpich. Er muss auf dem Schiff sein. Sehr wohl. Du bist durch eine Narbe gekennzeichnet. Vorsichtig sein. Ähm, warte doch. Isn't this going to get you into trouble? Oh, probably, sir. But I don't mind. It won't be the first time the first mate and I have had our differences. <laughs> I don't think you ought to leave the ship yet, sir. Stop worrying, my boy. This is England. I'm home again. But I didn't like the looks of that walking corpse. Kept sniffing around the whole voyage. From the way you described him, I've never laid eyes on the man or he on me. Smell that London air. I'm not worrying anymore, thank heaven. And thanks to you. You know, Varner, there are some things that words can't express. Just between us men, I don't know how to thank you, so I'm not going to try. You've taken me on trust, my boy. Of course, sir. Ah, thank you. Just one thing, sir. Huh? It wasn't a woman, was it, sir? No. I thought so. <laughs> Good luck, sir. And be careful. Thank you. Would you mind seeing the coast is clear? All right. Goodbye, old boy. Er ist wie vom Erdboden verschwunden. Ich habe keine Ahnung, wo er ist. Vollständig verschwunden. Es ist keine Spur. Schnell. Jawohl.
What you doing here? Let me go. Let me go or I'll call the court. Thank you, my dear. You saved my life. Saved your life? Here, who are you, anyway? Well, I was laboring under the delusion that I was a carefree man returning home for the fatted calf. And now I realize I am the fatted calf. Wish you'd say things I can understand. Uh, have you got a cigarette? Thank you very much. Who are them blokes what are after you? You won't believe me when I tell you that I've never before laid eyes on any one of them. How'd you know they're after you, then? When one's been hunted, my dear child, one develops instincts. It's amazing. Did you commit a murder? Mm -hmm. However, I suspect that something of that nature was about to be committed when you came to the rescue of the victim. So, uh, once again, my dear, thank you. Your memory will be imperishable as long as I live. And uh, just how long that will be it depends again on you. Now, see here. I ain't getting mixed up in nothing, I can tell you that. Oh, heaven forbid. The last thing in the world I want to do is involve an innocent. But I need the loan of a few shillings. Uh, a pound if you have it. Ah. Uh, you talks like a gentleman, but gents don't go around asking girls for money. You've probably never before entertained a desperate gentleman. I've simply got to get to my brother's house in Grosvenor Gardens. Grosvenor Gardens? Go on. It should be obvious that I can't get that far on foot, especially with these other gentlemen in the street. I need a cab. I may have to change to sundry other cabs, and uh, unfortunately, when I left my private yacht, I neglected to put a stiver in my pocket. I am, for the moment, absolutely penniless. Come off it. I uh, see you don't trust me. Well... Allow me to thank you at any rate for the great service you've done me. I shall have to risk it on foot. To lend all you've got is a pretty big loan. Unless something unavoidable happens to me, you shall get this back with tenfold interest. Make sure you get your money back, is that it? Right. You wait here where you're safe. I'll get a cab and use a pal of mine. <clears throat> Don't stand there coughing, Reeves. What is it? It's Mr. Allen, my lord. Mr. Allen? Yes, sir, the young lady, my lord. Gerald, old boy, bless my soul, it's good to see you. Alice, my dear. Uh, Alan, your face, the scar. Oh, those revolting clothes. What has happened to you? And allow me to shake your hand too, Reeve. Oh, 
Alan, come in my study. I must see you alone, immediately. Now, don't be so impatient, Gerald. I feel like shaking hands with everybody. How are you, Reeves? And you, sir. How are you? Oh, Alice, allow me to present a very dear friend of mine. This is Miss, uh... That's odd. What is your name? Jerry. Jerry Stokes. Lord and Lady Risborough, Miss Jerry Stokes. Uh, uh, how do you do? Hello. Pleased to meet you, Mum. How do you do? I must talk to you. It's very important. Yes, of course. But first, have you got a fiver in your pocket, Gerald? But, my dear boy, this is most urgent. But no more so than this. Come on, a fiver, please. Oh, very well. Thanks very much. Now... Uh... Just a half a minute. There you are, my dear. That's for you and a thousand thanks. You don't owe me all that. Well, of course I do, and a great deal more than I can ever repay you with money. Here. I... I ain't gonna take it. Now, don't you get stubborn with me, young lady. Do you want to be choked again? Al! Here. Al, I tell <laughs> you, there's not a moment to waste. Certainly, sir. There shan't be a moment. Alice, I'm sure you and Miss Stokes will find much to talk about. Do you mind if I keep this, sir? Uh, I might need it later on. Fine Quinn, Lummy. Wish I could meet a bloke like him every day. And me thinking he was balmy. Imagine. Won't you sit here? Whew. This is comfy, ain't it? Great heavens, Alan. How could you have got yourself in this awful mess? How did you know about it? The embassy's been making polite inquiries about you for nearly four weeks. Lately, they've become more persistent, more pointed. Then, not ten minutes ago, the Foreign Office telephoned that our agents in Berlin say that you're secretly accused of... of an attempt upon the life of their Führer. Oh. I told them, of course, that the suggestion was fantastic. That there was absolutely no basis in fact for such an accusation that you couldn't possibly be involved in any such affair. That is the truth, isn't it? Yes, Gerald. Thank heaven. Then you go straight with me to the embassy and clear the matter up at once. I'm afraid I can't. In heaven's name, why not? Uh, sit down, Gerald. Young woman, what is your connection with Alan? Alan. Is that his name? You, you don't know him. Never laid me eyes on him before tonight. It's a bit of all right, though, if you ask me. A real swell. I say, what's this jam he's got mixed up in? Are the Razas after him? The, the, the what? Razas! Dicks! Coppers! Policemen! Oh, yes, policemen. Hmm? Good, ain't it? Hmm. But, Gerald, old boy, I did not sign their faked-up confession. But they won't need it if they can get you back into Germany. But they've got to catch me first. Oh, they know you're in London. In that case, I shall get out of England. Well, that's impossible, too. You have no passport. Any effort to obtain a new one would only involve the government. Besides, every ship and plane leaving the country will be watched. What about Scotland Yard? Within 24 hours, there'll be a demarche on my desk asking for your arrest and return to Berlin. To refuse their ambassador, that would be an unfriendly act. Hmm. We would have no choice but to comply. Do you know what would happen then? You mean I might even have the honor of having my head lobbed off by the first headsman of the Reich? I mean, there would first be a faked-up trial. Not you. But England would be convicted before the world. And that would pave the way for what they want. War. Don't forget their Reichstag fire trial. You know their genius for producing witnesses and documents to prove their enemies guilty of what they intend to do. In that case, I shall imitate their Gestapo and become invisible myself. I shall vanish utterly, completely, as if I were dead, for as long as you wish. I'll see no one, not even you. 
If I could only help you. But you can, old boy, by not worrying. This whole thing will blow over before long. It's bound to. And in the meantime, I give you my word of honor. There'll be no confession, no trial. Gerald, I've got one of my dreadful headaches coming on. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Why, yes, of course, my dear. I've left that young person in the living room. Don't Alice, you? I never thought you'd be the first to throw up the sponge. Come on, now, you've got to see Jerry at the door. No, I shan't. But after all, she's your guest, you know. I can't. I really can't. Remember, she thinks you're a lady. Surely you don't want to disillusion anyone so young and trusting. <laughs> Ia, you look like the gentleman who asked me to have dinner with him at Lion's Corner House last bank holiday. I? Well, I'm not the gentleman, miss. In fact, I'm not a gentleman at all. You're the spitting image of him, then. But you do act more scaredy like Now, miss. Jerry, Lord and Lady Wisborough wish to say goodnight. This is the first time anything like this ever happened to me. I'll never forget it. Good night, Mr. Reeves. And it was Lion's Corner House. Well, good night. <laughs> good night. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night, Alice. Hope to see you very soon. Good night, Helen. Come along, Jerry. Gerald, I don't know just how I'll work it, but somehow I'll get word to you and let you know what's up. Well, I'll wait till I hear from you. Beg pardon, my lord. Mate Smith is calling on the telephone again. I'm not at home. Well, good night. Good night, Charlie. Wait. It's you he wants. Who? Major Keeve Smith. Keeve Smith? Yes. He called in my office yesterday. He said he was a neighbor of yours. A retired military man from the west of England. <laughs> what's he look like? Tall, good figure, rather formal. Talks about Kenya. You know the type. Talks about Kenya? Does he wear a monocle? That's the fellow, yes. Did he ask if I were here? Yes, sir, he did. You told him? Yes, sir. You see, knowing he was an old friend, I thought... Mm. Gerald, take that call, will you? Well, what shall I tell him? Tell him, uh... Tell him I've just left for the club. Goodbye, old chap. Don't you worry. Gerald, what is all this cursed mystery? Alice. Ambassador's telephoning, Scotland Yard phoning, Major Keevy on the Keevy, Alan looking like a police character with his face all clawed like a tiger or something. He's mad, perfectly mad, insane. If you want my advice, you'll call the Rosas. Ros. Dix! D all clear, maybe? It must have fell off when I dropped me ten. It was a nod. Little stones on it, all sparkly. A gentleman give it me. Oh, oh that. Hey, hey. In that case, a gentleman will give you another one. That's the least I can do for you, isn't it? <laughs> you're not half as grown up as you pretend to be, are you, Jerry? Now you're making fun of me again. <laughs> Flatfoot, I know him. Oh. 
From now on, I'll distrust everybody but you, Jerry. Get yourself some sleep. I'm going to curl up on the couch. Good night. Good night. What the devil are you sniffling about? Huh? What is it? My dear child. Come on now. Come on, no more of this. Let's stop the crying, huh? That's it. Now, great big smile. Come on. Great big smile. That's better. Much better. Good night. that door down. Well, I couldn't leave it unlocked, could I? Well, that's right. I never thought of that. And by the way, my girl, who put that coverlet over me while I slept? Don't know. Just got there, I suppose. Mmm, I smell food. Fish and chips. What a miraculous aroma. If that's as good as it smells... Come. Sit down. How does one, uh, uh... <laughs> With your fingers, silly, like this. Mmm, of course. I forgot the fingers came before forks. Ain't you never had fish and chips before? This can't be fish and chips. Of course it is. Just think what I've been missing all my life, huh? Come on, dig in, my girl, before I get your share. I don't like gentlemen. Like me, you mean? Oh, no. You act like a gent, but you ain't. I mean, you really act like a gent. <laughs> That's a very complicated statement, Jerry. Shall I tell you something? You have great character. You're an extraordinary girl. And a very pretty one, too. <laughs> Come on, eat up there. Where are you going? Far away. Soon I'll have money, and I'll be able to give the gentleman with the monocle a slip until I get on board a liner. Gentleman with a monocle? Uh, the head man, Jerry. You saw some of his minions last night. Uh, hmm. They're just small fry. I think that you'd better come along with me. On a ship? Oh, good heavens, no. To my solicitors, I mean. I can't come back here, and I want you to have some money for all you've done. Thanks. 
I can't leave England, my dear, without knowing that you have something for your old age. A woman of your advanced years. My greatest anxiety last night was in getting you mixed up in my affairs. And Say, on second thought, maybe you better not come along. I could have Saul deliver the funds to you here. Oh, no. Yeah, I think it'd be safer. I don't believe they'd hang around Saul's office. It's too near the law courts. They might. What about you? Huh? Oh, I can shake them all right. It's amazing how reassuring the sunlight is. But I was pretty jumpy last night. I'm going along. There's no point in it, no use at all. How do I know I'm going to get what... what you promised me? So you don't trust me, huh? I always pay my debts. I propose to get you 500 pounds. You may have more if you want it. I don't mean money. Well, what in heaven's name do you mean? You promised me a pin for me at. My dear Jerry, forgive me. I might have known. Every good soldier needs a crest for his cap. And you shall have your pin set with diamonds, if you wish. Good morning, Fräulein. What shall it be? Um, uh, you've got a, 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 a pin, sort of a brooch in the window. Yeah, yeah, I show it to you. It's a large heart. You know, I, I don't want an heart. It's too much like... Like the one you lost. That's what you want, isn't it? So beautiful, that piece of jewelry, and so fine a sentiment, the heart. You see, Fräulein, it's gold plate, and the fine stones, just like diamonds. You know, I think it's rather appropriate. How much is this one? Ten shillings, Fräulein, very cheap. It costs you two guineas on Regent Street. You should have that and put it in the gentleman's heart, no? <laughs> is it real silver? Better. It's chromium. Can I have it? Well, certainly, if you want to be heartless. Good, good. You make no mistake, Fräulein. A lifetime, I tell you. You would have it still when you die. Go on, take it. No, you've got to give it me. I... Oh. I present you with this dangerous weapon, Mademoiselle, with my undying gratitude and admiration. May you never lodge it in the wrong heart. There you are, sir. One pound, 20 shillings, I'll give you a check. Oh, keep it, keep it. There mustn't be anything mercenary about this soldier's crest. It's got to bring luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I think that looks very nice, don't you? Huh? Shall we go? Come on. I'll feed us in. Goodbye. Yeah? 
Heil Hitler. Taube eingeflogen vom Revier 6. Nummer 6. Farnsworth is office. Well, uh, it isn't exactly uh, Savile Row. The best I could do. After all, you know, you phoned less than an hour ago. Oh. Well, uh, aren't you going to ask any questions? Only one. Have you been abroad in the employ of our government? No, on my own business. I beg you to let me talk to the police. You don't realize the power of your name. That is precisely what makes my disappearance necessary and urgent. But, my dear chap, don't Look, you realize... If I get as far as Algiers, I'll give those fellows a run for their money. Africa is one continent I know better than all their invisible men. This is the, uh, hope dish? That is the money, yes. If you don't mind, we'll check the amount. No, no, I'll just take 500 pounds. And, uh, Saul, you can instruct her how to deposit it, huh? Very good. I don't want it. I won't take it. Oh, yes, you will. I'm going to have my way at least once with you. I wouldn't know what to do with all that money. Well, Mr. Farnsworthy will tell you. I won't take it. You'll want it. Will you be quiet? No. I can't stand a blubbering female. I've never seen such a stubborn woman. And if you say one word of thanks, I'll tear out your hair. Jerry, this isn't paying you for anything. I can never do that. Come on now, frown. Frown? <laughs> you stubborn little monkey. She won't do anything I ask her to. Yes, yes. Uh, Jerry. Uh, the German embassy telephoned here a few days ago. Their inquiry was pointedly casual. Anyone else ask for me? A friend of yours came in to see me the other day to consult me about some inconceivable tangle under the Married Woman's Property Act. He was continually referring to you. Was he, uh, English? Too perfectly. Major Keeve Smith, he called himself. Anybody taking an interest in us, Peel? I've just been taking a look outside, sir. The gentleman in the black hat is still feeding the pigeons, sir. And now he's been joined by the military-looking gentleman who visited you last week. Uh, uh, Captain Thorndyke's friend, the, the gentleman with the monocle. You see? Hmm. Thank you, Peel. Not at all, sir. Is there another way out of here? There's the back staircase. Oh, good. Thank you, Saul. Very much. Good luck. You fool. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing more. If at any time I'm found, the uh, coroner brings in a verdict of suicide. Suicide? Don't you believe it, huh? But well, don't attempt to reopen the case. All right. Bye, Jerry. You wait here for an hour and go out the front way. I'm going with you. Now, see here, I've had enough of this. Don't you see that your own safety lies in keeping away from me? Where are you going? To the underground on my way to nowhere. I'm going to the underground, too. I've got to get home, haven't I? So, will you drag this human leech off me? I will not. I'm going to the underground. All right. Bye. This is it, Jerry. And there's your ticket. Goodbye and take good care of yourself. You know, you're like that little arrow on your hat. Straight and shining, and that's the way I'll always remember you. Good luck, little one. Goodbye again.
Thorndyke's body was mangled beyond recognition by the train. A positive identification was made possible by his passport and wallet, which he carried. Shortly after the crime, a ticket collector tried to stop a man with a scar on his right cheek who escaped after presenting the wrong ticket. Evidently, the murderer had made his way back through the tunnel on foot. Police are searching for such a man. But he was killed. I don't know. Only a few people know, and they won't tell. Now they can hunt me down at leisure with the help of the British police. Perhaps I was a fool to come back here. I could have been well out of London by now. I wanted to hide out till it was dark. Yeah. You're gonna stay here? Huh? No. I've got to get out tonight. Ain't I never gonna see you again? Of course. Someday, when this all blows over, you know where my brother lives. Tell him I'm not dead. He'll take care of you. Ask him to write to me in uh, oh, a fortnight. No, three weeks. Tell me all he can. By that time, I'll have a beard and I can walk into a village without being suspected. He needn't sign the letter because I'll know whom it's from. But if he puts your name on it. He the won't. Letter. He'll address it to. Uh, your name, Mr. Stokes. Mr. Stokes, care of the post office at Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis? Uh, have you got a pencil? I'll write it down for you. Over there in the basket. Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis, that's it. Here now. Mr. D. F. F is for fool. Stokes. Post office. Lyme Regis. Dorset. There you are. Now you can't forget. And remember, in three weeks. You got that? Well, come on now. Cheer up. You are the most stubborn little monkey I have ever seen. <laughs> This is as far as you go. Not a step further. Goodbye, Jerry. And thank you. Please. Kiss me. Jerry. Won't you kiss me? I know I'm never going to see you again. My dear, dear child. Diddy, there's a cozy little pub just across the bridge. Ain't off bad either, Ducky. Come on. What you want? Now, go on, miss, go on. I don't want to see you girls get into trouble. But you can't be pestering gentlemen at this time of night. Who's pestering who? Now, get along, get along. I'm sorry, sir. If I was you, I'd step along. Don't get mixed up with these here girls. Here, who are you calling names? Now, that's enough. You leave the gentlemen alone. Get along, get along. Good night, sir. Get going, get going.
Fritz. Take me out of here. Quick. These are men. Come. Come to me, Stick. The Herren have a word with you to reden. Sit down, my dear. We're going to have a little chat. Good afternoon, madam. I think you may have a letter for me. What name, please? Stokes. D. F. Stokes? Yes. Come, go through them, please. It's, it's, it's here. There's a parcel for you, too, in the back room, if you'll... Wait a minute, please. Just a minute. Very. Thorndike. Thorndike. You might as well be reasonable, my dear fellow. I'm so glad you had the sense not to break out while I was sealing you up. Now you cannot get out. You can't get in, you mean? <laughs> I've no desire to enter a cave after a trapped animal, even though I know you have no weapons. I admired your stone door so much that I imitated it by wedging another stone on the outside. You are sealed up as in a grave.
It's no use, Thorndyke. No use at all. Couldn't you give me a cleaner death than this? Don't be a fool. I could have killed you an hour ago. My purpose was to trap you alive. You've been immensely helpful. What is it you want? Now you're being sensible. Have you got it? What is it? It is the confession that with the approval of your government, you sought to assassinate our Fuhrer. Go to the devil! Uh, you're growing wearisome, Thorndyke. Once more, I ask you to sign. To save us both an unpleasant conclusion. I told you once I don't sign lies! You also told me you no longer believed in killing, yet you killed one of my men. Oh, I'm not blaming you in the least. I merely wish to point out that a lie is relative, as is truth. I tell you I did not intend to shoot your bloody Fuhrer! I believe you. I believe you're sincere. I really do at last. You actually think you had no intention to kill, that it was all a sporting stalk, as you call it. It was! And yet every minute you were deceiving yourself. And every hour since then you have lied to yourself. No! You've refused to face your secret self, Thorndyke. From the moment you crossed the frontier, you became an unconscious assassin. I'm going to show you to yourself as you really are, Thorndyke. I'm going to break through that civilized English mask you were born with. I'm going to show you what you really are and were. An assassin. <laughs> You fool, you fanatical fool! A token for you, Thorndyke. To make you see the truth. Cherry. Cherry. Where is she? What have you done with her? Do you expect me to lie to you, Thorndyke? Do you expect me to tell you that it was a sporting stalk? No. I am honest with you, as you are not honest with me. She made your mistake, Thorndyke. She flouted obvious power. She refused to tell us anything. Do you know that if it hadn't been for that uh, postal address that you so thoughtfully wrote down, I don't know what I should have done. If you found that girl, I swear I'll kill you. Somehow, I live to kill you if it's the last thing I do. You believe that the death of our sacred Führer would be no great loss to the world, didn't you? Surely then the death of a girl like that would be no loss at all. She was found dead in the street, Thorndyke. The police reported that she uh, jumped to her death from a window. She had nothing to do with my actions. She was innocent, innocent. Yes, just as innocent as our Führer was of any wrongdoing against you. No, he's guilty, guilty against me and against humanity, against every decent, peaceful person in the world. He's guilty of hatred, intolerance, and murder. And that is why you tried to kill him? Yes, yes, I intended to shoot. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't realize my purpose. I wouldn't face the fact that I could make myself the instrument of all the pitiable, oppressed, suffering people of the world. I wonder why I put that shell on my gun. Now I know. Yes, I intended to kill. I intended to avenge the crimes of this monstrous tyrant. I know it now. And you were acting for your government? No, for myself. But it was for the sake of your country, wasn't it? No, for mine as well as others, for your misguided people as well as my own. And then even though your government knew nothing about you, you were acting on their behalf? No. You said you wouldn't sign lies. I've proved them true. You've admitted the whole thing. I have a plane waiting for me in Croydon. I must soon go, but when I go, it will be with that document signed by yourself. It may interest you to know why that document is needed. It will make interesting reading when we publish the first German white paper. What do you mean? My country has already marched into Poland. I don't believe you. Twenty divisions crossed the frontier today. If you're telling the truth, England and France will be at war with you within a week. You're commencing to rave. We shall take Poland, and no nation in Europe will dare to raise a hand. We're on the march at last, Thorndyke. 
Today, Europe. Tomorrow, the world. Thorndyke. Thorndyke, why don't you answer me? Hmm. What? I'm waiting for you to sign. Now, uh, I've, I've, I've got to read it, haven't I? Oh, certainly. Take your time. Have you got a cigarette? Yes, certainly. It's on the stick. Pull it in. Have you read it? I've got to think it over. I shall give you 15 minutes, Thorndyke. When the time is up, if you haven't delivered that document to me properly signed, I shall shut off your air and go on my way. You may last a few hours, but they will be most unpleasant. How do I know you let me out after I've signed? I shall remove the outside stone when you're ready to hand it out. And then shoot me when I crawl out. My gun is in its holster. You will have to take my word as a fellow hunter for that. Thirteen minutes, Thorndyke. Remove the barrier, Thorndyke. Are you ready? You hear me, Thorndyke? Yes, I hear you. Five minutes more. Have you removed the outside stone? Open your side of the cave and you'll see. Satisfied? Yes, I can see it's clear. Your time is nearly up, Thorndyke. Hand out the document. You'll have to reach for it. Hand it out through the vent hole. Your time is up. I'm waiting. And be sure it's signed. Push it nearer. I don't propose to have my wrist seized. You can come out now, Thorndyke. Come on out, Thorndyke. You're free at last.
you're like that little arrow on your hat. Straight and shining, and that's the way I'll always remember you. Surely, then, the death of a girl like that would be no loss at all. Ain't... Ain't I never gonna see you again? Every good soldier needs a crest for his hat. <laughs> Your course and objective are clearly marked on this map. Yes, sir. Here. You will make your reconnaissance and return immediately. Right, sir. All the best, old chap. Thank you, sir. Somewhere within Germany is a man with a precision rifle and the high degree of intelligence and training that is required to use it. It may be days, months, or even years, but this time he clearly knows his purpose and unflinchingly faces his destiny. <laughs> 